Today's video is going to be story time, boys and girls. So pull up a chair, get comfortable, and let Uncle Bruno tell you about the time he got kidney stones after he started the carnivore diet in 2018. What's shaking bacon? In today's video, I'm going to start with a bit of an update. So uh, my name is Bruno Panucci. I'm down about 150 pounds so far doing this carnivore way of eating. I've been doing it on and off for a while, but I've been doing it consistently for a year and a half. I first started very low carb eating in 2013-14 and started a carnivore diet for the first time in 2018. So before I get into that part of it, I'm going to talk a little bit about an update. I've started having room temperature ground beef. Ground beef has been my staple through this lion diet challenge I've been doing for two and a half months now. And I got to say, I really do enjoy the lion diet. It's very affordable. It's easy to do. It's very simple. And it just became more simple because I've gotten quite comfortable having room temperature ground beef. So room temperature or even out of the fridge cold. Now, this is interesting because I never like the texture of the beef fat when it's cold, whether it's a steak, especially if it's a steak, I still don't really enjoy that. But when it's ground beef, I never liked that that white tallow. I never found it comfortable. And the first time I found out I actually didn't mind it was when a friend of mine mailed up some carnivore bars for me. And I had it for the first time and I was like, wow, that was really good. And I wasn't sure how I'd like it because there's a lot of tallow. It's 80% tallow in those carnivore bars. Coincidentally, right around that week, I also started having some scoops here and there because I was in a real rush. And so I was just grabbing scoops out of a container of uh, ground beef. And it was still pretty cool. And I have to admit, I didn't mind it. And I actually kind of liked it. And I thought, wow, my life just got way easier because the only thing better than going down to red meat for simplicity is having a lot of ground beef in that way of eating. So I went from a lot of ground beefs and I do a lot of meal prep. So I'd cook for like a few days worth of food. So really I was only warming up my food every day. And then I got to the point where I was like, I don't even have to warm my food up anymore. This is the best. I take meat out of the fridge, put it in a container or in a bag and I take it to work. It just can't get any easier than this. So we're going to get into the topic now, talking about the carnivore diet when I first started it in 2018. Now, when I first started it in spring of 2018, I was doing intermittent fasting with it. And I just did it for the experience of what it was like to do intermittent fasting. So a few months later, I thought, I'm going to do this carnivore way of eating. So I tried it for a week. Felt great. I knew what to expect. I knew I'd feel rough the first week. But by the end of the week, I felt amazing. And then I just kept feeling better and better each week. And at the end of each week, I reassessed whether I was going to do this longer. And then I got to the end of the second, third, fourth week. And each week, I noticed a marked difference from how I felt the week before. So I kept this up. And after a month, I thought, I don't see any reason why I'm going to stop doing this until the end of three months. Now, I hadn't had kidney stones in about two or three years, probably about two years by that point. So I was doing pretty well and I wasn't on any medication for it. So anyway, around that time, I had this back pain one day and I thought, that's weird. And it came out of nowhere. It was in the middle, lower of my back. And I noticed for about, I think I had it for about three days and it was getting kind of worse and worse. And at one point I was just sitting at home. I was going to get together with a friend of mine. Before I go further with a story to measure pain, I like to use a pain scale from one to 10, 10 being the worst one being not so bad at all or nothing. A seven is usually something that'll make you stay home from work. You know, an eight, you're at a doctor's office, a nine, you're at the hospital, or a 10, you're definitely at the hospital and you're probably admitted at the hospital. So one day I was home and I had this back pain I'd had for a few days, suddenly got to the point where I went from like a two or three up to like a four or five. And I thought, that's weird. This kind of went up pretty fast in a matter of like an hour or two. So I had canceled on my friend. We were going to go out and do something, probably go to five guys or something like that. And I said, you know what? I think I'm going to go to a walk-in clinic. He goes, yeah, I think that's a good idea. So I canceled, I got in my car, and by that point, the pain was worse, and it was pretty serious. And I only live about three minutes away from a hospital. And I drove to the hospital, and by the time I got to the hospital, it was at a, it was at eight or nine out of 10. So it was pretty bad. It was so bad, I parked in front of the hospital in a parking zone where there was only a 15 minute wait. And I had to walk across the street to the front doors. I walked in, and when you walk into the emergency area, you know, you typically go up to a triage window and you tell them what your name is and then they have you take a seat and then they call you back and they bring you in behind that glass and they ask what's wrong with you and what your symptoms are as they check out your blood pressure, your hemoglobin and all this jazz. So when I walked in, I walked right past that window and I walked into the open door and I walked behind that station to where the nurse was and I just sat down and I was like, I just, I was out of it. I was out of it. I was 
I was so far gone. I was in so much pain. The nurse normally in those situations, the nurse would be like, you get outside and you go sit and wait like everybody else. And she looked at me, she looked me down and up and could tell I was in excruciating pain and didn't say a word. I give this woman so much credit for not pulling rank or being a jerk about this. And she just quickly started taking my temperature and she put the little doohickey on my finger. And so she started assessing what my problem was. And she was like, I think you probably have kidney stones, but the doctor will be more clear about that. So they put me in emergency and I was lying on the table and they sent me for some scans and they came back. And it, sure enough, uh, the doctor and the nurses started kind of chuckling because I was lying there in horrible pain. Like I was lying back and forth moaning. It was so bad. I, it was pretty excruciating. Now I've been in pain like that once before with sciatica, but this was uh, new and I had, I had no idea where this came from and I thought something's wrong. So they were chuckling because they looked at the number and it was like a, it was like an 8.9 millimeter kidney stone. And they were like, oh, you know, you, you got reason to act the way you're acting. So like, don't worry about it. So they said, typically at this size, we usually, you know, once it gets a little bit bigger, we'll opt for surgery or a procedure to get rid of that and break it down but it's already passing with you, so there's nothing we can do. So I was lying there for quite a while in a lot of pain, and the medication they were giving me wasn't really doing anything. So there's a particular type of anti-inflammatory they'll give you when you have kidney stones, and I think they were just giving me too weak of a dose because I was a big guy. So I think that medication just wasn't doing enough, and I think eventually they were giving me some morphine. I don't know which was doing more. I honestly think it was the anti-inflammatories, and they would only last maybe an hour or so. I would be able to tolerate the pain for about an hour and then I'd come back gradually over a period of the next hour and then I'd have to wait another two hours before I could get another dose of my medication. Eventually it passed and I went home I think the next morning it took like 12 hours or something like that or 16 hours. Typically a kidney stone passing for me took about 12 hours. That was in the beginning of September I believe so it was all of September, October, November that I had kidney stones. Typically what happens is when you get kidney stones, they want to find out what kind of kidney stone it is. Mine turned out to be uric acid. Often they're calcium based. My gout was basically backing up my kidneys. I've had a history of gout by that point for well over 20 years. I never had it in my kidneys though. So it was always somewhere in my foot or my ankle, either one foot or the other. For the next two or three months, I was passing kidney stones almost every week. And I'd wake up and I could tell when I was gonna pass one because I'd feel the sensation in my bladder in the morning after I'd go to the bathroom that I still had to go. I still had this pressure in my really lower abdominals. And just like uh, I still had to go to the bathroom, almost like I had a full bladder. So these kidney stones were dissolving in my bladder. So they hurt going from my kidney down to my bladder, but after that, no problems. So they were turning into dust after that. For the next few months, I was passing all these kidney stones. So I'd wake up and go to work, feeling a little off certain days. And sure enough, those were the days where I had my kidney stones. And by 11 or 12 o'clock, I started getting the back pain. And what happened was I was also getting really nauseous. So I'd have to leave work in the middle of the day and I'd have to go home and just sort of sweat it out. And it was usually about a 12 hour window before these kidney stones passed. So once it passed, I was still tender for the next couple of days, but nothing compared to what it was like when I was passing the kidney stones. So the pain would go from like a nine or 10 down to a manageable five or six. And believe it or not, the pain only lasts a couple of days. Within oh, two or three days, you feel 100% after you pass a kidney stone because all that scratching going down the tube from the kidney down to the bladder is just like micro scarring. It's really small, like as thick as a hair, right? So it's painful at the time, but it heals very quickly. I ended up doing this for about three months and then it got to the point where I, one day, I was passing one and I went home just like usual from work. I had my routine by this point. I would sit in a chair, I'd sit in my lazy boy, my dog would curl up in between my legs and we'd cuddle and I would watch TV shows and movies and I would dry heave into a, a bowl because the nausea from these kidney stones was making me dry heave quite regularly. This one I went to pass was excruciating and it was really bad and I was drinking a lot of water while I was trying to pass this kidney stone and it wasn't really doing much. And I noticed at the end of it, when I passed this kidney stone right around midnight, um, I went to the bathroom, I peed probably three liters in a matter of 45 minutes to an hour. All that urine that was being backed up by this kidney stone was, was incredible. And the doctor said, yeah, you know, that's kind of old school. We don't do that anymore. We don't try and push them through with liquids. So I was like, mental note, good to know. <laughs> so I wish someone would have told me this earlier. So anyways, by midnight, the pain was gone and I fell asleep on the couch. I was pretty exhausted. 
because you're in so much pain and it's like a toothache. The pain doesn't go away, right? So you fall asleep out of exhaustion typically when you have something like kidney stones or aggressive sciatica. It feels just like a toothache, a sciatica does. And so it just doesn't go away. And so finally this pain went away, this excruciating pain was gone and I fell asleep on my couch and at about 4.30 or 5 in the morning, I woke up and moved and I just shifted. And when I shifted, I felt something that felt like a terror in my kidneys and it was extreme pain and it made all the pain I had gone through in the last few months look like it was nothing. And I, I stood up and I thought I was going to pass out. I literally thought I was dying. I had the feeling that my kidney somehow detached, something detached inside me because I felt like the stitch. I was like, oh, and it was really quick, almost like some terror. And then this excruciating pain and it was blinding pain. I had to call 911 and an ambulance came and they took me to the hospital. And that's when they found out I was passing like a 10 millimeter kidney stone. So I think it was like 9.7 millimeters. I had to get this procedure done and the doctor put this catheter up in me. And that was when they found out it was uric acid because up until then, even though I was using a filter, nothing was coming out. Typically what happens is when you get a kidney stone, they want to uh, get you to pee into a filter. Clearly all the liquid's gonna go through and any pebbles or dust particles are gonna be left behind and that's what they're gonna analyze and they'll figure out what's causing your kidney stones. And at that point, they'll figure out the source of your kidney problems. So with mine, it wasn't really showing up every time I urinated into this filter, nothing was really coming out, which was really peculiar, right? Because nothing was in my bladder either. They had done CT scans. The doctor finally got some samples when he put this, I think it was a catheter up in there. And so for the next month, I had this thing going from my kidney down to my uh, bladder and it was not painful to pass all the kidney stones that they broke up, and I haven't had a problem since then. But I asked the doctor, I said, look, I've been on this all meat diet for three solid months before this happened, and I went off of it once I started having these problems because I started having beer and different foods. I was gambling on the fact that it was a calcium-based kidney stone just because the odds are typically calcium-based. And I live in a city with a lot of hard water. I said, no, he said, that can't happen. You have too much in there and it's probably been backing up for years. All this uric acid has been backing up for years. He said, how long have you had gout for? And I said, oh, like 20 years. And he said, yeah, it's been backing up. He said, were you losing weight? And I said, yeah, I was losing weight. And he said, that's probably what's happening because the something I learned was the ketones in your body that are trying to get flushed out are competing with the uric acid in your body that's trying to get flushed out. If you look up gout in any pathology book, as I was in college, it showed me that it was an arthritic problem. Well, it's a kidney problem. I hope that's changed in the textbooks in the last 20 years. Anyway, the doctor reassured me that wouldn't that wasn't the problem. And he said, if this is helping you and it's making you feel good, which it was, doing this way of eating makes me feel great. He said, go back to it but don't worry about this. And we'll just put you on medication to manage the uric acid. So I've been on gout medication for a few years now, since the end of 2018. And I had to go up to 900 milligrams of allopurinol. 900, that's a ridiculous amount. Uh, my doctors had said they'd never seen anyone go past 800 milligrams. And so I was on this really strong dose because anything less than that wasn't helping. But I've gotten to this point where I learned to manage it and I'm down to about 600 milligrams of allopurinol a day. And I've tried cutting back to 500 milligrams, but I start to feel a pressure in my back. So I'm not really going to flirt with that yet. I'm going to wait till maybe I drop down another 30 or 40 pounds and then go from there. So I still have about another 80 pounds or so that I want to go with my weight loss. Now I don't get a full on gout attack. And if I dehydrate myself, I can feel a little bit of pressure in my toe, but I don't get a full on gout attack. So that's significant because even when I was taking 900 milligrams of allopurinol, I was still getting gout attacks regularly, almost every day. Cause every time I'd start to lose weight, I get this gout attack, I get a gout attack. And now I was worried about not just having gout attacks, but kidney problems. I didn't want to pass kidney stones. So it was making staying with carnivore really difficult because now I was a little gun shy. I was worried every time I started to lose weight, I was like, oh man, I'm past the strongest dose of medication I'm supposed to be on for allopurinol. And it's still getting plagued with gut attacks consistently. So there's no reason at all why I won't get plagued with kidney stones again. So I ended up finding out the solution to my problem. And I believe the solution was my body's insulin was still out of whack. Even though my blood sugar is good doing zero carb, as soon as I start to lose weight, every time I was still eating, my insulin was still out of whack. And I think there's a strong link between insulin problems and gout. So I came across an article about metabolic syndrome and the link to gout. It's not proven, but it turned out I started correcting my metabolic syndrome, which a few of the problems already corrected on its own, 
but I still thought, you know what? I wonder if I can have normal fasting blood sugar and still have insulin resistance. And I think clearly I did because I started taking a product called Berberine and Berberine helped manage my sugar spikes that I would get with my meals. Now my fasting blood sugar was fine, but I still had insulin spikes that were probably way too aggressive after being overweight for such a long time, right? So I ended up taking this product and it lowers the sugar spikes, which therefore lowers the insulin spikes. And that was the last time I had a gut attack. It was the last time I've had kidney stones. So it's really nice to manage my weight. I find steady state cardio is a not a good thing to do when you have gout because it's keeping your body burning your metabolism up. You don't want that. So I try and do exercises geared towards building my metabolism. I get comments every now and then in my videos like, why are you not worried about weight loss as your first issue? You should be worried more about that than anything else. And I, cause I'm always talking about how much I want to repair my metabolism. And this is one of the reasons why I want to repair my metabolism, because if I lose weight from exercise, from weightlifting and HIIT workouts, where I'm doing body weight exercises, I don't get gout attacks. I don't even have the twinge in my toe. But if I go too long without eating and I go into an accidental fasting, boom, my toe will start to get stiff and tight. Now it doesn't turn into a full on gut attack. It's like a one or two, but it's there. And that means it's sort of waiting in the background. So I never let it get to that point because I'm managing my blood sugar and I'm managing my metabolic syndrome, even though four of the five problems with metabolic syndrome are gone and I don't technically have metabolic syndrome anymore. Now I only have one of the five and that's a waistline over 40 inches. Now I'm also a tall guy, so I'm still gonna go by that standard, even though it probably doesn't apply to me. I'm still gonna go by the 40 inch standard. So once I'm under 40 inches on my waist, which I have just a few more inches to go, I'm technically gonna be 100% free of risk of metabolic syndrome. And I'm gonna keep trying to push all those symptoms further and further away from me. And a carnivore diet is the way to go for that. It manages all those symptoms within the first month or two with me before I start getting into any serious weight loss. So that's the neat thing. Carnivore tends to heal the body before the weight loss becomes extreme. Now, some people get extreme weight loss early on, but I don't, not this time around anyway. Anyway, I gotta get going. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you got a chance to learn something from this. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Talk to you later.